Hello everyone, we are looking at a game from the 1976 Chess Olympiad in Haifa in Israel between uh Uh, Anthony or Tony Miles with the black pieces. Now, uh, let me just say a few words about the um, Olympiad in Israel in 1976. Um, out of 90 FIDE member countries, only 48 sent teams to Israel. And this was mainly uh, due to security concerns. There was a lot of uh, upheaval uh, in uh, the Middle East at the time. Uh, a lot of terrorists. Of their uh, chess players, uh, for example, in the same year, you had the uh, hijacking of a plane in France by uh, some terrorists and uh, the Israeli uh, command. Those rescued those hostages. Uh, it's called Operation Entebbe. Uh, you should look that up. It's pretty interesting how they uh, they did it. But um, it was only a few years prior in 1972 where you had the uh, at the Olympics. Uh, I'm sorry, of the Israeli athletes um, uh, or that were on the Israeli Olympic team uh, by terrorists. So um, a lot of the uh, countries did not participate um some you know for political reasons of course but um men most of it was just out of fear of you know something you know happening while they were in israel so that's basically half of the teams uh did not uh, put did not participate in 1976 so in this uh chess olympiad uh, uh soviet union wasn't there yugoslavia uh, basically, like the Eastern, you know, all of the Eastern Bloc uh, powers weren't there. Yugoslavia, Hungary, and that's usually your gold, uh, gold, uh, bronze, and silver right there, um, especially at, at that time. So, in this particular year, the United States actually won the gold uh, medal with uh, uh, um, Kavalek at board one. Now, um, and I believe England uh, was bronze, uh, had a uh, bronze medal. Um, and United States hadn't won gold since like 1937. So it was good the United States was able to win. But um, of course, they didn't win against the top uh, competition. Like I said, half of the uh, FIDE member countries uh, were gone. So that little background, let's get right into the game. So again, you had the United States... Uh, board one, uh, Lubomir Kavalek, uh, versus uh, England's board one, Anthony Miles. So d4 was played by Kavalek, knight f6 by Miles, c4, c5, d5, and b5. So, yes, Miles was playing the Banco Gambit in the 70s, and he has actually quite a few games in the Banco Gambit. He was somewhat of a specialist, okay? So, Knight f3, so Kavalek declines the Benko Gambit. Usually nowadays, uh, the, the Gambit is accepted, at least partially, uh, by taking this pawn here uh, on b5. Then, usually uh, another pawn is offered, and players will sometimes play b6 and decline that second pawn, and sometimes uh, players will fully accept the Gambit. All right, but most of the time you will see that uh, at least one pawn is accepted. Here, Kavalek declined the gambit outright. And Miles kept putting pressure on the center. B5, uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Bishop B7. Taking would be a bit premature here. If he played B, take C4, then White can just continue his development. Knight C3, uh, and let's say Black tries to just... Uh, strong point this pawn e4 d6 e5 d takes e5 knight takes e5 and white will recover the pawn shortly uh, with a better position so bishop b7 just putting more pressure on the pawn after all um, black was willing to gambit this pawn anyway and you can see if 
white takes now, uh, then the D pawn will fall. So A4, uh, trying to force black into um, a commitment here. You know, uh, what are you going to do with this pawn? You're going to push. And basically, uh, white is just trying to get black to, uh, you know, commit here. Perhaps just get the um, a positional for black because it would alleviate all of the pressure on the center. This move is possible, of course. B takes uh, C4, where um, white is pretty much forced to play knight C3 so he doesn't uh, lose uh, the D pawn. And that's a, a decent continuation. Also, knight C3. And again, it's blacks. It's on black to prove that uh, he has compensation uh, for the pawn. So, um, it's best for him to play actively. So, for instance, just keep putting pressure on this uh, pawn, for, uh, pawn chain. So, E6, for example. This pre pretty much um, almost forces E4, right? If white is going to try to have any type of advantage, E takes, E takes, and then black can play a nice move like bishop D6 here. Bishop takes C4, and then you got like a, you know, even game. All right, this pawn is blockaded. White has, uh, black has some pressure against it. Um, you know, both sides will castle, and you had the typical uh, Banco Gambit uh, game here. However, Miles just told, uh, chose to play a6. Knight of d2. And now, b takes c4. Of course, d pawn is in danger, so e4. And e6. Notice how Miles is just uh, continuing to put pressure on, on d5. And also, white is falling behind in development as he moved the knight uh, for a second time from f3 to d2. And it seems that Kavalek is somewhat um, off his game a little bit. Kavalek is normally a very strong player, but it seems like he's not really prepared uh, properly for this opening. And so here, he again, to me, he makes an anti-positional move, and he actually takes and plays D takes E6. D takes E6. And now Knight C3. And of course, um, black, excuse me, white wants to go ahead and uh, take this pawn. But the problem is, is a counterplay that black will develop. So for example, if bishop, um, actually let's take with this knight first. So if knight takes uh, c4 here, then queen d1. And of course, this knight can't capture because of the... Um, Pawn on e4. And then you get black, you know, being super active here. Either with rook d8, check. Or moves like knight d4. You see? So black, um, you know, definitely has compensation. The other move is bishop takes c4. Which looks more natural as the bishop is uh, being developed. And um, white is also prepared himself uh, to be able to castle. All right. And black would just simply develop here also. Right. Bishop d6. And common theme in the Banco. Right. Queen c7. And then move like g3. Again, you would like to play knight f3 here. It's pretty natural. But again, you open yourself up, you know, to a nice, strong initiative from black. So after rook d8, um, even if you try to tuck the, you know, king out of, uh, queen out of the way, excuse me, say with like queen e2, knight d4. And that's the problem is black is very active in the position. That's why black has the better position. So, this is why Kavalek played f3, right? He's just trying to kind of 
keep things, uh, you know, slot let black, uh, get in an in initiative being that he is ahead in development. Miles takes over on the dark squares as he should with queen c7 and now knight takes c4, right? So he, um, white gets his pawn back, but rook d8. See, he has to give up some time now. Queen c2, bishop e7. Notice the development on each side of the board. So at this point, right, I'm going to show you what, what black, some options for black here. This position is very good for black at this point. So again, I'm going to give black an extra move. So if black could, his plan, he has basically two, two kind of plans here. So castle... And let's say uh, bishop e2, knight d4. Nice, nice option to have. Another idea is let's say castles, knight h5. And the idea, well, with knight h5, is so he could play bishop h4. Check. G3 doesn't work because knight would then take g3 notice uh um, all of th all of this attack is coming on the dark squares which are very weak due to uh white's pawn placement and the same variation let's say he plays queen f2 right to stop this idea now look where the rook is so a nice idea is f5 here and of course you can still play knight d4 and knight b4 all right, so I just wanted to show you these lines just to give you an idea of how active black is and to show you some plans in the position and also let you understand and see why black is better. And right? I'm not just telling you he's better just to say it. But in the game, white gets to move also. So Cavalier played bishop e3, innocent enough. Castles. Queen F2, so you can see the um, attack on the C pawn here. And then just simply Knight B4. He could have played Knight D4. You know, it's great to have this pawn here for black. So Knight B4, um, you know, uh, threatens to infiltrate the uh, white territory. You know, say by going to D3, also it protects this pawn. So Rook C1. And another option, again, for black here is knight h5 here with the same idea as I mentioned earlier. If uh, e5, then f4. It's very strong. And again, black starts just whipping up uh, the initiative here. Um, another option here is just rook d4. Or rook d3. Because the bishop takes the knight uh, d3. What actually was played in the game. Was another strong move by Miles. But knight h5 was definitely stronger. But Miles played knight fd5. Very strong move. He wants to open up the position. And again. When you have the lead in development. You want to get the position. Uh, open, especially when the uh, uh, king is still in the middle of the board, All right? And sometimes you may have to sacrifice uh, to do it. So the game continue. E takes d5. E takes d5. And this is why the variation with knight h5 is stronger because black, excuse me, white had this resource up his sleeve, which is queen g3, just simply uh, trading uh, queens. Of course, bishop d6 doesn't work because the knight would just snatch it. So, yes, black will get his piece back, but um, white is able to slow down uh, the attack somewhat. Now, Miles, of you know, rightfully doesn't want to trade queens here, and he just plays queen c7. Uh, if queen takes g3, h takes g3, and d4, bishop uh, f4, d takes, b takes, knight d5. And again, black is, is still better, but... Um, white just has more chances uh, to hold on right in a position uh, like this so black is still better but 
again, you know, White just had more chances. So I think it was a good choice for uh, Miles to um, not trade Queen. So he, Queen C8. The knight came to a5. And now queen e6. And again, just exploiting the fact that the, this king is here. Bishop is hanging. So knight d1. So after knight d1, this bishop is hanging. So miles just plays bishop c8. And Cavalier plays king f2 to get out, get out of the pin here. Queen b6. And you can just see that Miles is just not letting up the pressure. He's finding threats everywhere. And look at the white pieces. It looks like uh, Fisher random, right? It looks like uh, somebody just like left the board, you know, um, you know, without setting it up after a game. It looks white pieces just look bad. So um, Miles is just exploiting that. So the knight now has to move. Knight goes to b3, but it's still unprotected. Therefore, knight e2, attacking the rook, right? Threatening the winning exchange and this knight at the same time. What do you do? Bishop takes c5 uh, from Cavalac, attacking the queen and this bishop that's hanging. So now let me just uh, mention something to you. Now, usually if you're in a worse position, I can't even say usually. If you're in a worse position, uh, uh, a tactical answer uh, will backfire. Again, like I said, if your position is truly worse, the tactical solution will backfire if your opponent responds correctly. Right? Because if the tactical solution worked, that's confirmation that you had the better position in the first place. So what I'm saying is if your position is really worse and you opt for a tactical solution and engage... You know, in that way, and your opponent responds correctly, his answer will refute your idea. You can mark that down. All right, so in this case, you have bishop takes c5. How does, how should black respond? Well, black has two good response, responses. One, he could just grab the knight. The other, he can just play bishop takes. So, for example, bishop takes c5 check. If knight, if knight uh, c5, well, what happens with this rook down here? So he can't do that. So rook takes c5. Just queen uh, b3. All right, and then what? Let's say knight e3. How about bishop e2? Then just move like d4. Okay. So, black um, has an answer for anything that white may want to do. In the game, Miles just took the knight. And again, the idea, you know, is very strong. So, if bishop takes e7 here, then simply knight takes c1. Let's say bishop d8, right, trying to maintain the material equality. Well, look, this knight is hanging. It just exacerbates the situation of the black of the white pieces. They're so bad that it doesn't really matter what black does at this point. Bishop f6. Again, tactical solution right for white. Threatening mate. But queen c2. King g1. Queen c5 check. And now the queens are forced off the board. And you see how the tactical uh, solution for white backfired. And then he just drops the bishop. I just wanted to show you that variation so you can see what I'm talking about. Being in the worst position and trying to escape tactically. If the opponent responds correctly, it's, you're going to lose. Now, listen, sometimes we're in situations where you got to roll the dice, you got to take a chance, right? You're not, we're not playing against computers. So I understand, you know, players are going to try to tactical, you know, try to set a trap or something and hope for the best. I'm just letting you know that's 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 a law. Let's get back to the game, though. So, bishop takes e7 wasn't played, right? So, after queen takes b3, Cavalek just played bishop d4. So, he, he went for the mate, right? He's gonna... He's gonna hope Miles uh, slips up, 
you know, plays knight c1, and then he's gonna uh, checkmate uh, GM Miles. Again, nice, nice tactical uh, solution um, uh, for for uh, Black here. One, he could just play f6. That's like that's the easiest refutation. Just f, just shut it down because the reason why is because this rook is still on pre. So you could you could take time play a move like f6 and shut everything down. Another move you could do is bishop h4. Right, you can just pin the queen. This is force, and then take the rook. So these are just examples, and then notice that the knight is hanging also. So these are just examples of, again, white trying for a tactical solution and it backfiring. I'll give you another example. Let's say he plays bishop takes g7. Right now, of course, if you play incorrectly, you do king takes g7, for instance. Now you're gonna give up a, a perpetual. So we're not talking about situations where you know you don't respond correctly. But let's look at the correct response. So let's say bishop takes g7. You just play queen takes d1. Queen g1. I mean queen g5. Check that. That looks scary. Again. It should not work if you're if you are truly better. Queen c2. What do you play here? Let's say K, let's let's play uh let's 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 play bishop e2. Well, not uh yeah, let's not even do bishop e2 here. And <clears throat> let's play queen. Let's try to uh, escape again. Rook d6. And notice where the queen is. Queen is ready to come right back here. So, for instance, bishop f6, queen g6. The whole attack is shut down. So, keep those thoughts in mind. And whenever you're under attack, especially if you feel like your position is better. Of course, it depends on you assessing your position correctly. You know, like that you truly, if you really feel that you're better, you should be able to find a refutation. So anyway, Miles just played bishop f6, attacking the bishop, and bishop takes f6. So wow, he's gonna checkmate uh, Anthony Miles. Of course not. not. Real simple solution: Queen b6, knight e3, Queen takes f6. Game continue. Rook c5. Of course, uh, White could have resigned here, but Queen d4, attacking the rook. Rook f8. So now you have this pin on the knight. F4 uh, protects the knight. Rook E4 uh, attacking the uh, F4 pawn. Bishop E2. Rook D8. D E8 just piling up. Rook D1. Queen takes E3. Queen takes so now just a liquid liquidation of everything. Knight B4. Rook C7. Rook B3 and. Um, uh, Cavalek resigned. So really strong game in the Benko Gambit uh, for Tony Miles. I'm impressed by his use of the initiative and how he kept the pressure on Cavalek and how um, he put Cavalek in that position where his pieces were so very awkward. And uh, any, uh, you know, tactical escape that Cavalek tried to do, uh, Miles just shut it down. And he just uh, was merciless in his uh, uh, conducting of the attack, especially after the move uh, knight d5. So I hope you enjoyed that game. Let me know in the comments uh, how you feel about it. Um, also, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, it helps move my videos up in the algorithm of YouTube. Share the video. You know, let people know about the channel. I appreciate it. Please uh, consider donating to my channel in the link below. Um, that will help uh, very much. And also enjoy the uh, links that I put uh, down below also to uh, some DVDs or books if you still read those. Uh, and I usually try to uh, put the links uh, so that they correspond to the opening that you see on the board. So in this case, we talked about the Banco Gambit. Um, so look for those videos uh, down below. Alright, so I hope to hear from you guys. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you soon on the next video.